Good morning, everybody. And thank you all for attending the 2021 CSI North Central Region Conference. Our first session is preparing students for a successful career. Uh, I have three presenters, Bob Dye, Zach Thiessen, and Thad Goodman, and some information about all three of them, if you don't mind. Robert Dye is a professor in construction management at Johnson County Community College in Overland Park, Kansas. He holds a bachelor's degree in construction science from Kansas State University. He has been the NCR certification chair and served for five years on the CSI certification committee. He became a CSI fellow in 2007, due in large part to his work in institute certification and also for helping to resurrect the Flint Hills chapter with Wiley McMillan. More recently, he was one of the contributing authors for the CSI Project Delivery Practice Guide, third edition, which is used as the basis for the CDT exam. Bob is also a registered roof consultant and independent specification writer with expertise in commercial roof system design and construction document preparation. Thad Goodman is construction design manager for National Gypsum Company with a territory covering the CSI Great Lakes and North Central regions. His primary responsibilities are education of gypsum products and assembly issues and commercial buildings to the architectural community. A lifelong member of the construction community and the gypsum industry, Thad has presented numerous hands-on workshops, leadership training programs and webinars, and is a former track leader for CSI's Product Representative Academy. Thad has held several positions at the chapter, region, and national level, and is currently serving a second time as the Great Lakes Region President. Zach Thiessen is a student at Johnson County Community College, enrolled in the construction management program. He will be a CSI student chapter officer this next year and is scheduled to take the CSI CDT exam later this month as part of the national program that will be discussed in today's presentation. Please welcome Bob Dye, Thad Goodman, and Zach Thiessen to the stage. And I'll see you all after the presentation. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. It's good to uh, be with you, even if uh, virtually. I wish we could all be in the same room, but uh, this will certainly suffice. Uh, so I thought we'd start off today with a, uh, a little word from our, or from my sponsor. Johnson County Community College. So yeah, I've been teaching there just a bit over 10 years now and a uh, full-time professor. And uh, as Dick graciously introduced me there, I do still do uh, roof consulting as my, uh, as my side gig. Um, so today um, we're gonna talk a little bit about what I think has been kind of an under the radar program that CSI has been involved with over the last, uh, I think four years now, it's been actively in place. I thought we would share this with you all and uh, kind of give you an opportunity to uh, on how you can participate and, and help out as well. So, so yes, we do have a construction management program at Johnson County Community College. And the program that we're going to be talking about today applies both to construction management or construction science kind of programs or pre-architecture programs but it's specifically focused at two-year community colleges, okay? Uh, that was the basis for this, and that's, I think it's probably money pretty well spent. It's a pretty efficient uh, approach to reaching a lot of people. On our advisory board at Johnson County, you can see that we've got a lot of firms that you probably recognize, uh, and some four-year universities as well that take our students and transfer programs. Uh, this is an evolving list of companies. We have a very active board. Uh, and this year, our board president is probably someone that you may know, uh, Stacy Bockwinkle. She's a graduate of Johnson County Community College, and she's serving as our advisory board president this year. We're very, very proud of her contribution and, and her help with our, with our students. Uh, so with that, I'd like to pass it over to my good friend uh, over in Ohio, Thad Goodman, if you would. And he's going to kind of give us a background, a little setup as to where this all came from. He's been working on this a long, long time. Yeah, thank you, Bob. I'd be glad to. Our efforts and our outreach for CSI sometimes lead us into areas that we don't expect. 
and the benefits can be tremendous. And this is a story of one of those times. Uh, many of you may know that I've been involved with the Institute's National Academic Program Committee for several years. And at one point I was the chair of that committee. And one of the things that we do is we make outreach to different chapters as well as community colleges and, and universities to try to bring the two together because there's some synergies that are really positive that we can help seed the next generation of CSI when we do that. And so I was talking to Charlie Setterfield, who's the architectural professor at Sinclair Community College in Dayton, Ohio, trying to link them with the Miami Dayton chapter to start a student affiliate. And so Charlie called me one day and he says, hey, we've got an opportunity that I'd like to share with you. Uh, we have applied for a National Science Foundation grant to help the community college students have a leg up when they, when they graduate and they move into the workplace. We wanna teach a certification and let the, give them the opportunity to leave with a certification when they graduate from our program. We submitted this grant and if for those of you that are involved, that have ever been involved in a grant, it's a long, laborious process. So they put it all together. They have a grant writer and staff. They submitted the grant and it was rejected, but it was rejected with interest, which is an unusual thing to have happen. And so the National Science Foundation came back and they said, we really love the idea. We just want you to choose the certification. And so Charlie said, we'd like to use the CDT as that opportunity because of my work with you and my work in CSI, I see this as a great opportunity for us to be able to further the build environment and move forward. Again, the rationale behind this was there was, there was no current national certificate system of any kind in the community college programs. And so the theory was, how do we, how do we give our students an opportunity to move forward and grow the diversity of what we're doing both in the marketplace with people that come out of that, as well as give students an opportunity to be more prepared. And so they actually called this thing the BE Prep Program, the Built Environment Preparedness Program. And so the thought process was, you know, when you look at community colleges, there are traditional students and there are non-traditional students. So you have people who have used their back for several years and they want to move forward, uh, maybe get into the job trailer, get out of the workplace, you know, get out of the, they get out of the blue collar offers and move a little into the, into the golf shirt collar part of the, uh, part of the project. Then you have young students who are coming out of high school who maybe traditionally didn't feel like a four-year college was right, depending on the debt load that they might feel like they have to take on and the direction that they have, that right plane, brain and left plane people. Um, some, some kids just see the fact that they have an opportunity to get into the workplace faster with less debt, and you can make fantastic money in the trades if you want to. So the goal was to come out of the program and actually have a certification. But the CDT was not that vehicle because we weren't a true certification. So the thought process was when Charlie, Charlie did some research and we went back and found that you could use a third of this funding to actually establish the program. It was a $900,000 grant, which meant CSI received approximately $300,000 to be able to transform the CDT that had fallen out of favor with some of the changes in certifications. It wasn't really a certificate. It wasn't really a certification. So we've moved the CDT to a full certification. Now there's been some positive things and some bad negative things. We've heard both of them on the way waves in the communities, but overall we've made the CDT an industry standard and given it an opportunity to be able to be better in the marketplace. So the goal was how do we get these students to come out with this? So that was to embed these products, this system into the teaching. And one of the ways they did that was with some community college outreach. And there were 40 different schools that were chosen to start down this process. So CDT was chosen obviously because the fact that those products are used on every in the country. And CSI was chosen because Charlie said, it's the one area where we feel like it touches all parts of the job site. Every single person can be a member of CSI and contribute because these are documents by every single person from the owner down to the, down to the occupant. So the objectives were pretty simple. We're, we're going to give the community colleges a program that they can embed into their system. 
we're going to use this opportunity at the community colleges where we have a more diverse population to be able to help attract some females and some different people into the industry that maybe would otherwise be excluded out, wouldn't get there. So we can increase the community college standings for a person that's coming out with a two-year degree as opposed to having to go through a four-year degree. They can walk onto a job site and be prepared to hit the ground running. And Bob, that's about what I've got if you're ready to take over. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Um, so I think uh, Thad's kind of laid the groundwork there, giving us the foundation for where this program was coming from. I think that was back, what, 2014, 15 time frame yeah, that this was initiated? Yeah, 2014, Sinclair had submitted for the grant and it was rejected with interest. And so I met with Charlie in October of 2014 so anyway, a, a lot of things, a lot of things came together. It looked, uh, you know, it seemed lucky to me, but I know that it wasn't luck. It was uh, good preparation and, uh, and a lot of uh, interest that's been going on for a long time there. So thanks that for everything that you did to get this going. I, I, I think it's, it's great, um, but we're gonna have to keep doing it. We gotta keep pushing with this program. Um, so here's kind of a little graphic that shows us um, uh, how this process was developed. Uh, so we looked for a science, technology, engineering, and math credential. They settled on the CSI CDT program, so that's good. Uh, CSI regularly updates the content of the uh, CDT through the body of knowledge analysis. So that's a nationwide uh, survey, and I'm sure many of you have participated in that over the years. So that's what keeps the current, uh, up to date with industry standards. Uh, this next part uh, has been proven to be a little bit of a challenge. How can we help the faculty at the two-year colleges around the country embed the CDT information within their coursework? Um, so that was that was the next phase, and that's where I kind of got to come into the scene uh, to start uh, helping with that. Um, how can the faculty deliver the curriculum that's been updated with the content from the CDT program? Um, and that's probably an area where all of you could participate and help out with this, uh, with this process as well. And then to help the students, this is really what it's about, of course, right? Is the success of the students. How can we help the students prepare for and pass the CDT exam? And more importantly, to prepare them to be successful in the industry on, on graduation. That's that's really the, the uh, overarching objective here. Uh, CSI stepped up and said, we will reimburse the fee. So in other words, the students can take the exam uh, at no charge. So all of that together, and you can see there's a lot of steps and there's a lot of work taking place and it's ongoing, is with the goal of coming up with 400 uh, community college graduates uh, ready to be successful and, and productive in our industry. So uh, that's kind of a little graphic of where we're going with this. Uh, so here's the activities that were assigned. And I can tell you, I think it was back in 2017 that we had the first meeting, uh, a national meeting in Chicago, where they brought educators from, from schools all around the country. Uh, and this is where we started to talk about how can we incorporate the CDT into your curriculum? Um, now, for me, hey, you know, I've been drinking the Kool-Aid a long time, right? I'm a CSI fanboy, certification, CDT, and all the rest. There was no convincing for me because we already do this at Johnson County. Uh, but for a lot of schools, this was a new concept, uh, and they've already got their coursework developed. And so to make those kind of changes, that's a heavy lift, right? That's a challenge there. So um, that was that was a big issue going from 2017 on, once we started to bring the, the colleges or the educators on board. Uh, so the Educators Toolbox, so that's an online uh, depository for uh, all of us to post lesson plans, uh, quiz questions and those kind of things. Um, and so that's a, that's a place where we can share 
what works for us. Um, and so that's one way that we're trying to help to uh, make the lift a little easier for the, for the teachers to have some resources to, um, to use in their classroom. Uh, this next item of encouraging enrollment and, and course completion by underrepresented student <laughs> populations. So I think Thad touched on that briefly uh, in his introduction. Uh, and obviously that's a, of interest to all of us. And I can share with you, at least from our perspective at Johnson County Community College, uh, that we have uh, quite a large percentage of uh, women in our courses. And um, we also have a, a lot of immigrant students, and we also have international students, which I think is <laughs> uh, just stunning because, uh, you know, how does a, a student from Africa find their way to the middle part of the country and to a two-year um, school? I, I, I don't know, but that's it's really, really impressive. So we've got a, a really uh, solid mix at, at our school, but I can certainly understand how this would be, um, you know, this is an ongoing effort that, that we're all going to need to work on uh, is to address that. So that was part of this as well. And then this last item, which I, I think I've already touched on, is to assess faculty in incorporating the CDT uh, information into their degree programs. So here is um, some of those schools uh, that were uh, involved initially. I tried to find uh, the schools that are in or nearby the North Central region. So you might well recognize some of these. Uh, I think my good friend and colleague that I met in Chicago back in 2017, Joel Hall, I think he's out in the crowd there. If I can see him out there with Lewis and Clark Community College. So welcome, Joel. And uh, anyway, these are schools that were represented as part of this BE prep program. And their faculty have all expressed interest in incorporating the CSI project delivery practice guide or CDT kind of information into their coursework. So uh, if you know folks there, this would be a good place to get started. Uh, CDT program, I would be remiss, I guess, if I didn't touch on that a bit. I know this isn't a certification uh, presentation, but nonetheless, uh, I never, never hesitate to talk about my students and the CDT program when I get a chance. Uh, so those of you probably know uh, that the CDT is based on the um, Project Delivery Practice Guide. Uh, so this was the second edition, and I'm happy to say that we now have a third edition of the PD, PG. And uh, this has been, although the content probably has not changed that much, it has been updated but I think the content has carried over from the second to the third edition. So you're not going to have any, you know, mind bending new uh, approaches to construction. But I can say that this third edition uh, is much better organized. Okay, so the information is presented in a logical, you know, linear fashion through the entire project. Uh, so I think it's, it's certainly a much better textbook to use in classes, and hopefully it's not quite as confusing as, as the second edition was. Uh, we've worked on this to try to make sure that uh, we followed the old CSI axiom of say it once and say it in the right place. Uh, those of you that have studied from the earlier edition know that uh, we would talk about a concept at length in the design stage, and then we would move as you keep reading through the chapters and get to the construction stage guess what, we revisit that topic and we talked about it all over again. Uh, so we've kind of eliminated that in the third edition. So I think it's a little more streamlined and it, like I said, it works much better as a, um, as a textbook in class. Uh, there is also, CSI has developed uh, uh, support materials for teachers to use. So there are study guides, uh, there are uh, PowerPoint slides and, and all of that. So um, that works well too. And that's all based on this new third edition. So if you haven't added that to your library yet, um, I would encourage you to do that. 
Um, I don't get a commission or sales uh, bonus on that, but uh, as you know, we all volunteer at CSI, but uh, this is, a, is an excellent, excellent resource uh, document to have in your to have in your library. So I can share that at um, at our school at Johnson County, we um, have already been using the Project Delivery Practice Guide. In fact, we've got two courses that are based on that. So we basically go through the first half of the book in one course, uh, and then in the next semester we we finish the book. Uh, so uh, obviously, I think it's a good uh, textbook, and that it works well because the information that it shares, uh, that it presents to the students, and it gives them a wonderful overview. And um, and I'm sure if uh, all of you, I was going to start my presentation by challenging you to think about whenever you first started your job, when you first started your journey in the construction industry, what do you know now that you wished you knew back then? You know, uh, and I'm sure we've all got something, but you know, uh, I always say, man, I wish I had it. I wish I had everything written down in a book that I could just pick up and and read it and, and learn what was going on. And that's certainly the Project Delivery Practice Guide. So that's why I'm so passionate about making sure that uh, we spend time with our students so that they understand this. It's a, it's a confusing process, uh, designing and building buildings. So um, we spend a lot of time on that, but I think our students are better for it. And I know they're very well prepared whenever they, uh, whenever they graduate and move into the industry. Uh, so with that, I think I'll uh, call in our student representative, Zach Thiessen. Uh, Zach has been in my class. I don't know that Zach and I have ever been in the same classroom together. He might correct me. <laughs> I think we've done almost all of our time together virtually because we've been totally online for just over a year now since, uh, since last March. Uh, but uh, Zach and I have a... Uh, have a connection, which we just figured out the other day, and I don't know why it took so long for me to realize this with his last name, but I know Zach's grandmother, uh, Nita Thiessen, who was uh, one of the leaders of the Kansas City NAWIC chapter. And back when I was Kansas City CSI chapter president, we actually had a joint venture agreement between our chapters. And uh, Zach's grandmother was uh, kind of a mentor to me. I learned so much from her and, and all the women at, at NAWIC. It was just really, really awesome. Uh, we set up our uh, scholarship foundation with the Kansas City CSI chapter was based on the model that I learned from from uh, from Zach's grandmother and, and all the gals at uh, at uh, Maywick. So just they've been a great influence on me, and I was really tickled to uh, to share that with Zach that we've got that that common connection. So more conversations to come there, I'm sure, Zach. So I'll hand it over to you. Please take it. Awesome. Thank you, Professor Dye. Uh, yeah, it was actually on uh, Wednesday that we learned that we had that mutual connection um, that, you know, we were, we were talking about, you know, what am I going to talk about and things like that. And I said, well, you know, my construction is not background. I said, the only exposure I had was through my grandma. And he goes, is your grandma Nita? Yep, that's her. Um, <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was, that was definitely really neat to uh, find out that, you know, what are the odds that I just go to a college and the teacher knows my grandmother. Um, okay. So it's awesome to see, it looks like we got about 45 people here. That's an awesome turnout. So uh, thank you everybody for being here. Uh, like Bob said, my name is Zachary Thiessen and I'm actually the vice president of the Johnson County uh, Community College Construction Program. Uh, this is my first term. Um, so I just wanna to talk to you guys about the program uh, and how CSI has impacted that. Um, so, uh, I, somebody, I don't remember who mentioned it, but I'm what would be called a non-traditional student. Uh, I actually graduated high school and went to the Navy. Uh, I was in the Navy for four years and I was a jet mechanic. So, uh, absolutely no construction background other than, uh, skills USA and NAWIC events when, you know, I was gone as a little kid with my grandma. Um, so with that being said, CSI has actually helped um me and the program in the sense that about 99 percent of everything i know about construction i learned from uh professor die the associate professor steve bennett and uh 
the curriculum that Johnson County Community College has. Um, we do have our own CSI student chapter, um, which is it's an awesome it's an awesome thing for the students. It's a way for us to bond, especially in a time like this where everything's done virtually. Um, and we've had as many. I think the biggest turnout I've seen so far, which is awesome for the program, was about 27 or 28 people. And that was just students that didn't include uh, the professors that didn't include um, guest speakers that we have come in. Uh, our advisory board, we have a couple members that'll sit in. Uh, we have alumni that'll come back and sit in just so they can share experience, see how the program's doing, um, get to know the new students that are in the program now. Uh, and it's just a great, the this, this student CSI chapter is, a, it's a recognized uh, campus organization. It's just been a lot of fun. Um, and as an extension of that, we've also been allowed uh, by the Kansas City CSI chapter and some of the other chapters as students, they've allowed us to sit in on their meetings. Um, so um, it's a very beneficial experience for the students that we've got our chapter and that CSI chapters locally are allowing us to participate um, in their meetings to see you know, what real Expo, you know, get, give us exposure to the industry um, as students. Uh, as Professor Dye mentioned, we do have a very diverse program. Uh, we have, like he said, we have a lot of females in our student, uh, a lot of female students in our program. Um, we've got, you know, students from all over the world, all over the country. Um, I think we have one one student that is from Brazil. Um, I think we've got a student that lives in Hawaii. Um, so students all over the place, um, and it's it's really neat to see you know, make those connections, you know, with people all over the country and all over the world. Um, so uh, to to get into what CSI looks like in the classroom, um, so I made a couple notes. I'm going to read off here real quick. So uh, like Professor Dye said, so this is the tech. I mean, this is the book he was talking about. I've got it right here. Um, it's a it's a hefty book. Um, I had to read it as an assignment, so I know you guys can do it. Uh, it's a very informative book, a lot of information, um, and I'm pretty sure it'll be one that sits on my bookshelf, and I'm sure as I develop into a professional, I'll probably probably pull it down from time to time. Um, I believe the construction specs and docs class was probably the second and third class I took at Johnson County Community College, um, and I would say that just from those two classes alone, I came out with exponentially more knowledge in the construction industry and in or in the construction field than I had uh, before I went in. Um, so one, some, uh, one of the things I wanted to cover is just kind of what we talked about in both of those classes. Um, so in the specifications class, we talked about uh, project delivery, which includes teams, relationships, and a brief overview of formats. Um, we talked about project conception, uh, project delivery, uh, including design bid build, design build, uh, C, uh, CMAR, and those types of things. Uh, we got into quality assurance and quality control, which is a big, big, uh, as you guys know, it's a big deal in the construction industry. Um, and then we have, uh, we went through some drawings and specs uh, and a little bit more in depth towards the end of that eight weeks of the class on formats a little bit, a little bit more. Then uh, the second a, the second class was construction uh, documents uh, that got into some some pretty hefty stuff. Um, so that included procurement, uh, construction activities, including schedule, executing work, meeting submittals, uh, change orders, payments, claims, closeout, and facility management. Um, so it's a, like I said, they're very informative courses. There's a lot. It, they are challenging though. They, I mean that is. That's one thing about you know this this book and those courses is they're challenging. Of course, that's what college is designed for is to challenge you a little bit. Um, but it's also got very strong and very supportive material. Um, like I said, I, I I read the thing from cover to cover, um, and yeah, it's just a great it's a great uh, book for people you know for students in the classroom and. Uh, for people that have been in the industry for a long time. And as Professor Dye mentioned, um, we were actually one of the, I, I would assume and believe, 
uh, probably one of the first campuses and probably even one of the first classes that he's taught that is used this new uh, practice guide as a textbook in the classroom. Um, so if you don't own it, I'd encourage you to get it. Like I, like he said, he doesn't make a commission or anything. So, you know, it's, it's just a good book to have. It's very informative. And, you know, like I said, I'm sure sometime in my career, I'll, I'll probably pull it down a couple of times. Um, <clears throat> so as a result of taking those classes, uh, CSI has graciously offered for uh, students to take the CDT exam uh, this this cycle um, on their dime. Um, I believe that, so we have, and Professor Dye can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we have eight students that are gonna be taking the CDT exam uh, this cycle. I think we've got one that's taking it uh, next week, I believe, and then we've got a couple of us that are taking it closer to the end of the month uh, where we can just focus on studying once the semester is over. Um, <clears throat> But like I said, it's, you know, for a student, it's 165 bucks. Um, and I, I have no doubt that if CSI didn't, didn't help the students pay for uh, this exam, um, we probably wouldn't have eight students taking it. Not because they didn't want to, but because that's a hefty fee for a college student. Um, <clears throat> so um, again, you know, Thank you to CSI for that, and we're looking forward to it. I wanted to note on that um, that to, I, I believe, and I think Professor Dye can correct me on this, but I believe this is the only time uh, that CSI is going to be paying for students to uh, take the exam on their dime. Um, so that's where you guys kind of come into play. Um, as a student, like I said, the CSI for me has been a big, big, uh, contributor to what I've learned uh, as a student. Like I said, I, I came in knowing nothing and I feel um, I feel very confident uh, that when I graduate this fall, I'm going to be ready to go into a field if I want to, you know, if, if I'm if I decide to go into the working field or that if I transfer to a four year uh, university that I'll be uh, ready to dive right in and, and not not feel set back or like I'm like I'm missing something. Um, so <clears throat> with that being said, I just want to encourage you guys as CSI, um, members and, and, you know, officers and things like that to get involved with your schools, um, the local schools, the local colleges on the screen here, you know, Professor Dodd shared some of, some of the various colleges around the region and things like that. Um, so just get involved, um, you know, see what you can do, uh, to maybe, you know, implement a CSI student chapter if they don't have one. Uh, invite students to your local meetings if you guys have, you know, like the Kansas City CSI does with our students. Like I said, they allow us to sit in. It's a great opportunity for the students to connect with people in the industry. Um, so I just challenge you guys to, um, <clears throat> to get more involved with the students and, and see what you can do to help them uh, because they're the developing professionals for the future. Um, so see what, you know, see what you can do for this, for them at the school, see what you can do for them, you know, at your local CSI, uh, even consider things like, you know, like I said, for, for myself, the, the CSI is going to be paying for it, uh, for the CDT exam, but that's going to be the only time they do it. Um, so maybe even consider programs like, you know, uh, if they meet certain grades, you know, you give them an eligibility or. Or if you have them pay and you reimburse them if they pass that way, there's an investment and an incentive from the student to get, you know, uh, industry certifications that matter, that are relevant, that will uh, advance their career and make them more industry ready coming out of school, uh, whether it's at a community college level or a uh, four year degree level. The other thing I would say is see what you can do to implement the book as a whole into programs. Um, I think Professor Dye had told me that, you know, some schools, they use bits and pieces of the book. Um, you know, they might have a couple chapters they cover out of it. Uh, you may, you know, they might have a little bit of CSI material they cover and then they go um, back into their their programs that they've been using for a long time. And like I said, I've, you know, I'm, I'm a student at Johnson County. Um, 
you know, first year student, I'll be graduating in the fall if everything goes the way it's supposed to. And like I said, I, I came in knowing nothing. And a year and a half later, I can contribute most of my knowledge to this book right here um, and Professor Die. So, um, like I said, just see what you can do to get involved, uh, help students out that, you know, uh, maybe don't know what's, I didn't know what CSI was when I started. So maybe, you know, maybe that's what it is. It's simply, they don't know what CSI is and it could become uh, an integral part of the way they proceed through school. Um, so I think that's all I've got. Like I said, you know, Johnson County for me, it's been a great opportunity. It's been a great experience. Uh, yeah, I'm, like I said, I should be graduating in the fall. Uh, and I have no doubt that it's because you know, and I, and, I've, and I feel prepared to graduate. And I have no doubt that it's because of the role that CSI has played in, in my education, uh, along with the, uh, the outside chapters contributing to the school. Uh, like Professor Dye said, we've got an awesome, we've got an amazing advisory board. So maybe even consider reaching out to some local schools and seeing if you can get on those mm -hmm. and, 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 and contribute back to the program. Um, so that's all I've got. And with that, I will pass it back to Professor Dye. Okay. Thank you, Zach. Very well, very well spoken. Uh, I knew you'd do a good job and I'm very impressed. Thank you so much. That was great. Um, yeah, I can speak, uh, from the faculty side of things, uh, just to add on to what Zach was saying right now is probably not a good time to reach out <laughs> to your, uh, colleges or your faculty, they're going to be really busy as the students are with final exams. Uh, we've got final exams next week. And so it's it's a very hectic time of the year as we get to the end of the semester. But uh, over the summer, I would encourage you to reach out and find out uh, who is the uh, department chair uh, in, the, in the construction management, construction science, pre-architecture programs, those kind of things. Uh, and again, to consider the two-year community colleges, I think uh, those sometimes get overlooked, uh, but there are a lot of students there that are like Zach. They're very talented. They're very motivated, and uh, I think they're going to make a great contribution to our industry here in a, in a short time. Uh, so I would encourage you to do that, to reach out to them. I can share with you, too, as, as a faculty member and as a department chair, uh, I get bombarded you know, every week with emails from different organizations. And uh, it's it's very easy just to push those off um, because there's just so many of them that we can't we can't read read through and decide what's relevant and what's not to our program and that kind of thing. But I think CSI is such a good umbrella type organization. Uh, you know, it appeals to building owners, manufacturers, reps, contractors, architects, engineers. There's so many ways that we could uh, that we can work this that um, it's definitely uh, beneficial for our students to see all the different career paths that they can take uh, and CSI is, is a perfect uh, perfect vehicle for that um, bring that back in uh, I know everybody wants to see him while he's coming back in I'll say thank you all very much for uh, for for being here it's been uh, great to spend some time with you and uh, appreciate you being here so early in the morning uh, to uh, to take this in and have a good conference too. Bob, before you leave, we do have a question that yes. was given to us from Lynn Jaborowski up in Milwaukee. I know Lynn, yes, yes. Uh, she knows you very well, I'm sure. <laughs> um, she says Milwaukee CSI would like to work with Milwaukee Area Technical College. You indicated that they were involved initially. Do you know if they are still involved? because we don't know and have had difficulties maintaining contact. We'd appreciate any help you can give us. Okay, yes, I could. Uh, I don't know whether they're still involved, uh, but since they were initially uh, part of this, I, I would say yes, that they are, or the people are still there. So I could check my uh, contact list and, and find out who that is. I don't know if I met those people or not at one of our, one of our meetings, um, but yeah, I'll find that. And, uh, and uh, get back to uh, to Lynn or anybody else. If you if you saw a college there, or if you know a, a school nearby, and you want some help tracking somebody down, I'll have some more time here over the summer. So um, just to 
refresh here too, Zach mentioned that this is the last year that CSI is picking up the tab. Uh, actually, this is, it, and that's true. Uh, and part of the reason for that is uh, Corona last year, uh, a lot of people didn't take the test. So they had money, grant money left over or whatever. So they just carried that over and said, okay, we're going to extend this for one more year. So it's 2017, 18, and 19 were the, were the years the, that they were um, <clears throat> working on this. Uh, and so all the money was supposed to have been spent last year and was not. So that's, that's part of the reason why it's still carried forward. But that's also the reason why I haven't been in contact with my school colleagues around the country um, because we didn't we didn't have any meeting last year and uh, for obvious reasons but um, yeah we met in Chicago we met in Philadelphia and we met in uh, Dayton Ohio at Sinclair College so um, it was uh, it was very good very helpful to, to get to meet those people and learn best practices but so yeah if there's any help that I can offer you I'm happy to Happy to track down or shake down my uh, contacts list. If I could share a couple of takeaways, action items for everybody sitting in the room right now. They're like Lynn, they'd like to be able to get more involved, but they're not sure how to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I encourage you, said, um, we've heard from Zach from a student perspective, we've heard from Bob from the professor perspective, you know, and I can give you my personal objective or uh, my perspective, you know. The first thing we did was we found our local community college that was university or community college. If they have an architectural program or if they have a construction management program, ask, how can I help? I'd like to get involved. I'd like to be a piece. And there are several ways that you can do that. So if you rather than just say, how can I help? You might want to ask some of these things. Think about us as you know, we have got this program. We got this CSI group to a guest lecturer on a topic that you have, you know, or we could come in and talk about the industry in general. Um, you have an industry advisory board. The easiest way to get involved there, you know, all students are, are all schools are looking for a way to connect with the local community. And one of the ways they do that is they want their students to come out and graduate and have a job. So there's internships available and there's mm -hmm. industry advisory boards that, that work with the school to make sure the curriculum and the things that they're teaching are things that are actually going to be useful when they hit the ground outside the school. And so that's a great way to get involved there. Um, you know, IS, the Great Lakes Region Conference, or the Great Lakes Region has a whole part of their website dedicated to student activities. We can help you um, as well as the CDT when we talk about some of the things that, that Zach was saying, where you say this will be the last year that that, and it's a pretty heavy lift for students. What a great opportunity to, to, to create goodwill for CSI and to introduce CSI as a go-to organization Then to maybe contact your community college or your, or your uh, local university and say, we'd like to sponsor a CDT scholarship, setting fee, two or three or four. Most of our chapters could spend three or $400 to, we'll give you an opportunity to choose. Maybe they do a contest, maybe they do a test, maybe there's just two or three that are even interested have them sit in there and they the chapter could pay for their sitting fee for the test and take that burden off the students. So there are several different ways that you can create action items sitting there right now today. If you've just got a pen and a paper, think about some of these things that you might want to do and move forward. Yeah. And another way to, uh, to make the connection with the colleges too. And I've, I've done this is that uh, all of these schools obviously are in the business of public education right? That's their charter is to increase the education, increase the earning potential of the communities that they serve. Uh, so uh, one way that you might reach out to the schools is instead of trying to inject yourself into their programs is to say, you know, we would like to put on a seminar and we would like to use your facility, right? I mean, our, our college has dozens of presentation rooms or whatnot. Uh, and so I've had organizations approach me and say, we would like to, we would like to have our all day seminar series at your facility. Can you arrange that? And, you know, if there's an educational component to it, usually I can make that happen. And, you know, I usually put the uh, qualifier on there. If students can attend for free, 
I think we could find a space for you to put that on, okay? Now then, that's bringing people to your campus, gives you a chance to introduce your program to a bunch of industry professionals. And so, like I said, it's kind of flipping it around the other direction. Uh, what could I use my college, my community college for to help advance my program? So um, maybe you could have your CDT study groups meet at your college campus or whatnot. Uh, or maybe you can have a, a product expo or, or a CEU day at, at your college or whatever. And that would give good exposure for the students and also good exposure for the college and their program to, to the industry. So just another, just another thought there, uh, just to put more ideas on the table. Uh, so I see in the uh, chat bar here that uh, one of my students, one of our students is in the in the room. So Anna Liz, welcome. Hi, good to see you. I'm sure, I mean, we've seen each other a lot like this over this last year, but uh, Anna Liz is one of our international students from Brazil. And uh, so she's been taking our, um, been taking our courses to uh, refresh. She already knows quite a bit, but she knows it all in Portuguese. Did you have more questions for us? Dick? I'm there from George Everding, who is a retired specifier. How I've heard the name. I've heard the name. Yeah. How much yeah. specifications is typical you know, in one of your classes? Well, in a class like mine, probably more than is warranted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll put myself on mute and let Zach answer that. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? Is that good? Are we we spend enough time talking about specs or too much or just enough or what do you think? Uh, I think we spend a pretty good amount of time talking about specifications. Um, obviously, it's a big part of the uh, uh, CSI. It's part of C, a big part of CET and it's a big part of the construction industry. Um, I would say specifications as a general topic is probably talked about in almost every class that we do um, as it pertains to that class. Uh, yeah, you know, of course, we're not going to be talking about specifications for, uh, you know, excavation when we're talking about, you know, something completely unrelated. But we, but uh, Professor Dye and Professor Bennett both do a great job of of making sure that when we're uh, in a classroom that they understand how the lessons that we're learning and the classes that we're in and the topics we're discussing are relevant to specifications for that class. So we talk about him a lot, but but he's always very good about making sure that we discuss why it's relevant to what we're learning that day and uh, the overall uh, topics for that course. And we spend a lot of time talking about division 07. So, you know, that's the most important division, of course, so everybody. <laughs> uh, no, I think really, seriously, I think what I do try to impress upon the students is that nobody has all of the answers. You know, nobody at the job site has all the answers. But the source for everything is in the project manual. So, you know, if you feel comfortable with going to look up information in the project manual, hey, you know, you're infinitely smarter because you know everything that's in the project manual now. If you don't, you know, if you're scared of that or if you think, oh, that's too complicated for me to figure out, then you've really limited your value to the to the overall project. But so that's, for me, that's really what I try to, impress upon the students is you can figure this out you can find the answer and it's going to be in here you know and i think that's that's the value that i try to add to it i i'm not trying to develop uh specification writers you know i mean that's let's face it that's a that's a pretty specialized gig and i wouldn't wish that on anybody but you know it's um it's a <laughs> but it's not to be an intimidating uh document so that's 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 what I do with it. Does that answer your question, George, or we need to pour a scotch and talk about this later? I think that opportunity would probably be welcome as well. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You gotta, uh, know, your, you gotta know your audience, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll wrap this up. Okay, well, thank you. I just wanna say thank you again to everybody for being here. Uh, I wish I could see all your names or faces on here and say hi, because I'd be shouting out to several of you I know. that. And I want to say a special thank you to uh, Mr. Goodman and to Mr. Thiessen for 
for uh, letting me subcontract all of my work effort to you guys. You did a great job, and I really, really appreciate it. It's part of CSI is having a good network of friends, so thank you so much. Thank you all for attending the program. It looks like we had almost 50 people in this session, which is a wonderful turnout.